Good afternoon, Justice. Thank you for having that we have again this interview because you are the only one who can help us and who can enlighten us about what we need to see about this LIPA event that happened in 1948. And thank you very much for giving me all this. My dear friends, these are all the documents that we need to have in defending the LIPA operation. I want to mention some, for example, the document, the talk of uh, Cardinal Rosales to the Madres, the talk of Archbishop Garcera, the confidential report of Father Sikia, the journal of Father Blas, and the court report of the commission established by Archbishop, Archbishop Arguelles. There are some more, but I cannot mention it now. And the one who provided me this is Justice Harriet Dimitri. Let me add some key points, Father, if, you may, if I may. There are also other documents that are very vital. The document, this one statement that I took uh, in the submitting all the, all the reports of the court commission established by former Archbishop Arguelles. And it was, was the basis of the court, court commission report approved by the late Cardinal Vidal. Yes. And giving it the heel of stuff. Yes. And uh, I have seen, I came to know about some one document important that you have. And that is, you. I heard from you saying that you have the handwritten. I have both the typewritten and the handwritten diocesan decree of 1951, wow. wherein, I, wherein it said or it stated that the Occurrence in 1948 at the Carmel Nipa Carmel Monastery was not supernatural in character. But actually, if you notice, uh, I was reading the handwritten report, the handwritten the decree of Cardinal Santos, then Monsignor Rufino Santos, and the diocesan decree signed by the six bishops. The decree signed by the six bishops were actually a verbatim reproduction of the handwritten decree of Cardinal Santos. Wow. So it means they were just made rubber stamps wow. of the foregone conclusion by Bagnochi and Santos about declaring that the event in 1948 was not supernatural in character. And because of that, in order not to, to, make, to make it clear to them, to the other, to the faithful, that what they were doing was really objective and impartial. They had to banish Archbishop Persos from the scene. Why? Mm -hmm. Because as the local ordinary of the Archdiocese of Lipa, he had the full authority and control to conduct the investigation, which he did. He init actually initiated the investigation by appointing Father Angel de Blas to conduct a thorough investigation into the character of Sister Teresa by personally investigating her and making the necessary inquiry as to the circumstances of the apparition in the body. Actually, Justice, it surprises me why an ordinary work of a local ordinary is not done by Bersosa, but rather a papal known show, which is, it should not be his work. Which is against the canon law. Exactly, that's the point. The Code of Canon Law says mm. that any occurrence or any event within the diocese of a certain yes. uh, bishop or archbishop yes. is under the exclusive control and authority of the said bishop. If you recall, Father, even with the apparition in Fatima, it was the bishop there. Yes, the local Akita, ordinary of the place. Local ordinary. And even in Akita. Yes, yes. And even in the in the Louis France. Yes. These were all done by the local ordinaries. There yes. was no intervention from the Vatican whatsoever. And the Vatican waits for what will be the result of any investigation done by the local ordinary. The local ordinary will then make the necessary recommendation or proclamation correct. to be approved by the Vatican. That's very correct. So therefore this what happened in Lipa is something unusual. Irregular. Irregular. And totally anomalous. What do you think what what do you think the reason? Why it's irregular? They had a foregone conclusion to do away with the apparition, to do away with the truthfulness of the apparition, to stop the devotion of our 
to Our Lady Midjatex for Grace and to put put to shame the, the nuns, and especially Sister Teresa wow. and the late Mother Cecilia, by declaring, by saying that what they were saying were actually false and malicious. So Cardinal Santos, as a, the new administ apostolic administrator, was collaborating obviously with Banyots? They were in Cahoots. They were in the, in the, they were in Cahoots actually between the, they were in Cahoots by Nazi and Cardinal Santos. So when the, the Papa knew when the, but Nazi came to the Philippines, they had only one thing in mind, to destroy the apparition. So this is justice, this scandal. It's not about Sister Terce, it's not about uh, no. Mother Cecilia, but it's about how it was handled by the authorities. Actually, Sister, the late Sister Terce Castillo and the late Mother Cecilia were unfortunate victims of the machinations of Bagnocci and Cardinal Santos. Okay, it's very clear. It's very Insidious clear. machinations, malicious machinations. So they had to cast aspersions on the character of Sister Teresa and also on the character of Mother Cecilia. Because what is, you know, in any investigation to be conducted on the truthfulness of any apparition in any part of the world, the center of investigation is always the supposed seer, supposed visionary. So the, the, the object to be very objective about yes. the apparition, yes. about the truthfulness, they go into the moral character of the yes. person. Yes. So they had to destroy Sister Teresa, they had to destroy Mother Cecilia. So the diocesan decree of 1951 will bear the semblance of truth. The semblance of truth? Because it is not the truth. Now it answers my question, why they have to destroy all the, fa all the artifacts, all the documents? Precisely, and uh, that is the point. In making that false decree, mm -hmm. false and malicious yes. decree, they had to destroy all the evidences that would link otherwise. Wow. Meaning, they made that decree, and here comes, here are the proofs which would say otherwise. So they had to do away with the proofs of the authenticity of the operation. So when there will be a reinvestigation or a repeat of the inquiry by the Vatican itself, there are no more proofs to reckon with because we completely destroyed, including the diary of the late Sister Tulsi Castillo. Well, so this, this, and this is the reason why Archbishop Gabiola, Archbishop Gabiola started to investigate about the matter. Because one reason Gabiola had was because there are no documents that can tell about it, as if nothing happened in the past. So he started again. And not only that, Father, the supposed 1951 Vatican decree was never published or promulgated. Okay, give us uh, understanding about it. Right. The diocesan decree, what was extant was the diocesan decree of 1951. There was never a copy of the supposed Vatican decree, which was supposed to be the pronouncement of the late Pope Pius XII on the lack of supernatural origin mm -hmm. of the 1948 event. Given that fact, the new local ordinary has the power now to, re, to, re, to revisit whether the diocesan decree was actually valid or not. It's according to his mandate. It to, is his duty. To revisit. It is his moral duty as the shepherd yes. of the diocese. Agreed where the event occurred. And therefore... And therefore, they had to use as a shield the supposed Vatican decree of 1951. Wow. Because they said, never mind the diocesan decree, but here is the Vatican decree which says the same thing. There is no supernatural character of the event in 1948. But where is the proof of that Vatican decree? And that is what I have understood when you said something about it. Because but, you're asking for proofs. I have written the CBCP last January 28 because in the sometime in March last year, Pope Francis issued a directive 
to open the archives of the late Pope Pius XII. Oh, thank you for mentioning this again. Yes. Saying that the archives from 1938 to 1958 should be open for mm. public scrutiny to have access. Yes. The 1948, the 1951 supposed uh, decree of Pope Pius XII in 1951 is in contained all those archives, the period given by Pope Francis. How come the CBCP has it done? Because they know for a fact that there was no Vatican decree whatsoever. This is terrible. Even the Vatican, the, even the CDF decree of 19 of December of December 2015 has no basis whatsoever because it merely repeated the Vatican decree of 1951 and yet it never attached that decree to its CDF decree. I've been asking, you recall, Father, that when we had a meeting with, yeah, actually it was not a meeting, it was a confrontation Father with Sikia. Father Sikia May last one. May 1. Mm -hmm. I demanded a copy of the 1951 decree Correct. because you keep on saying, even in your Radio Veritas interview, that Sister Judith Singh was demonically possessed. Okay. That the images of the stat of Majatics are actually demonically infested, and your basis is the 1951 decree. Where is the 1951 decree? What did he say? What did he admit to us? That he doesn't have a copy. All of them didn't have the copy. I confronted Archbishop Ar Arquisa Valles, from was now the CDC, the incumbent president. You have a copy of the 1951 decree. He said the CBC does not have a copy. Neither does the Lipa Ordinary has a copy. You have the copy. What what? The 1951 handwritten. No, decree. no, it's the Yosisan. I'm talking about Pope Pius XII. There's none. There is none there's whatsoever. None. There's none. So they made use of the Diocesan decree yes. to remove the Sosa to clamp down on the devotion yes. to Our Lady in 1948. Yes. Because there was a big, big, big uh, uh, clamor for the, uh, for the faithful, not only in the, uh, not only among the Lipenios, but all throughout the Philippines and even abroad. Yes. They were so excited about the latest apparition of Our Lady here, not only that the first Asian country, supposedly. Yeah. So, Justice, when you gave me the talk of Archbishop uh, Cardinal Rosales, which actually you are repeating this, all the points of Rosales in that talk. Now we can we can answer our question: Why the exorcists have to destroy the Mijatrix images? Father, they had to do it. It was a grand design mm -hmm. of the higher authorities of the church to destroy the devotion because they wanted to subvert the CDF decree of December 9, 2015, which distinguished the apparition from the devotion. Yes. That CDF decree signed by Cardinal Muller, then the prefect for the congregation of the doctrine of the faith, made a distinction between the apparition and the devotion. And what that decree of 2015 said, you go ahead with the veneration of the Nijatrix. Just don't touch the apparition issue. Now, here comes the exorcism issue. They had to destroy even the devotion by claiming, one, that Sister Teresa was three, three objects of the exorcism. The person, Sister Teresa, in the confidential report that Father Sikia submitted to Cardinal Tagle, he accused Sister Teresa to be demonically possessed. Yes. Which is untrue because Father Blas himself <laughs> said otherwise. Number two, the object of the exorcism, the statue, the Mitratic statue, also demonically infested, no less propagated by Father Sikia, Father Kabadi, Father Serudo, and Father Legaspi. Hmm. And they even claim that it will be a sin of idolatry if Correct. they continue venerating the majestic image, that is right. which is against the you know, Second Ecumenical Council of Nicaea in 7, 787, which declared that the image of Our Lady should be venerated at all times. You're right. We are talking about 
early fathers, yes. early early church. Fathers of the church, photo. Yes. <laughs> and then there was, and then it was repeated in the third Constantinople Ecumenical Council. So therefore, they contradicted our Catholic doctrine. They committed heresy. Heresy. I agree heresy. with you. It was a heresy that we have committed. Yes. Yes. So that's the second object. The third object of the exorcism was no less than the Carmel Monastery, the sanctuary, the apparition site. And who did that? Okay. It was Father Serudo was commissioned by Archbishop Garcia to do an exorcism without the knowledge and consent of the nuns. And Father Serudo did not even go inside the monastery. It, they, he, did, he said he did the exorcism from afar, from the roof deck. All right, let's discuss the exorcism procedure. All these exorcists are claiming that the Medatic's devotion should, the image should be banned mm -hmm. because it's demonically interested. Yes. The devotion should be discontinued mm -hmm. against the Vatican decree of 2015. This exorcist claim that the sanctuary site itself, the apparition site, should also be destroyed because it was demonically infested. Correct. So and only three things. Three things. The gravest the gravest sin of all is the, the the attempt to destroy the sanctuary of the apparition site. No less than authored by Archbishop Garcia himself. Of course, he denied it. He denied it. He said he told the sisters that he never commissioned uh, Father Serudo to do the exorcism. But actually, he admitted in his talk to the sisters that he met Father Serudo in one of the in one of the talks that was conducted yes. here in the Manila, and they gave him approval. So therefore. Archbishop Garcia, Garcia was, was lying. lying. Yes. Who? Was lying. I have the transcript. Oh, you, yes, as you you gave me the transcript. I have the transcript. So Garcia was lying. He's lying to his teeth. And he wanted really to destroy everything. That was the gravest sin. Never mind about. Never mind. Uh, it's easy in a man to. Right. It's very easy to disprove the demonic demonic possession of Sister Teresa because Father Andre de Blas Jordan would say otherwise. And easy easy naman to disprove that the image is demonically infested because it cannot go against the church fathers. Yeah. The magisterium of the church father, seven eighty seven, way back in the early church, it says all images of Mary, there is no distinction, should be venerated and respected. Interesting. Because, as we have understood, they did all these things because they said that there is there are snakes in the apparition. According to Father Sikia's seers, mm -hmm. they saw snakes. I don't know how they how 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 uh, they, how they imagine. <laughs> how they? <laughs> they must have a very fertile imagination <laughs> for them to say that. Justice. They cannot just say all those things if they are not extramentally existing physically, which other people also can see. Let's go back to the book of Father Sikia. Yeah. This is the book of Father Sikia. And here he mm -hmm. lists on the procedure for exorcism. Catholic Handbook of Deliverance. Yeah. And he dedicated it to Our Lady. Okay. What a tragedy. And... According to him, the fundamental requirement for deliverance of a person, Sister Tirsi, before you could consider a person to be demonically possessed, you must do the actual investigation of the person. You must be there. You must see his his and her movements, talk to her or talk to him. Father Sikia never did interview Sister Tirsi until her death. As he admitted when we have our meeting, he also admitted in the his report to the to Cardinal Tanya. Ah, in the confidential report. The confidential report, 
but he was doing the mumbo jumbo. Okay. And if you notice, in the court report, he was just asked to make an opinion. He was never part of the, cons of yeah. the court commission. Yes, he was never part. He was never even made a consultant by yes, Father Richard yes. Fernandez. Fernandez. That should be very clear to Father Sikia that he was not a consultant. He was never. And how dare he would say that Sister Teresine was demonically possessed when he never even met her. Yes. He never even interviewed her. He never even interviewed the people around her. Can you tell us what he told us when we had the meeting? The basis of why he proclaimed, he declared that Tersing was uh, demonically possessed. He got it from, from literatures, from the YouTube, and from a relative of, her, of his who visited Tersing and died. His he, mother. And his mother. According to reports, it was his mother, Mrs. Letizkia. But how can you tell a person's character when you have just met him briefly? You have to know the person very well. It cannot just be a, a mere acquaintance cannot make a proper judgment as so, to the moral character of a person. So justice is going against the what he said there. He's going against his book. Oh my God. Just to be able to destroy the Vijatrix devotion. So this is a canonical It's a offense. canonical crime. It's a canonical crime. It is. And at the same time, it is a statutory crime. Is it a crime? A legal crime? Well, you only try to curtail my freedom of religion, I can sue you for damages. And that is what they are doing. Well, but I'm not, I'm not going to do anything, uh, anything about in the legal aspect. Not unless they sue me for life, and which I welcome, because I... Are you welcome? I welcome that, Father, because I will have a forum to ventilate all this truth, because even the CPCP does not want to listen to the truth. They put all their heads there, like ostriches, burying their heads in the sun, not wanting to hear the truth. Yes, Justice, thank you for clarifying all these things. I'm so alarmed, because in that interview, in that... Uh, Veritas interview of Father Sikia, which I quoted and I posted it in my Facebook. I have, Father, I have a copy of the transcript. Oh, yes. That's why when he said he never said, you remember I told him that he was a liar during our meeting last yes. week, 2017? Yes. Because I have a copy of the transcript of his radio Veritas interview, wherein he categorically stated mm. that she said that this thing was demonically possessed. Yes, yes. And yet he lied to us. Yes. Well, they are so used to it. <sighs> uh, no, I want to point out this thing. Because what's alarming when what he said in, in that Veritas interview was about the third eye. You know? Explain so. Third eye is against our Catholic faith. Exactly, that's the point. And third eye is even against his guidelines. Uh, that, you know, this new age, this and uh, this doctrine, it should not be considered when you do the exorcism. That is the reason why I said, might be the Mediatrix apparition, anything associated with the Mediatrix, is a victim of third eye spirituality. And there's no such thing as third eye spirituality in our Catholic doctrines. You know, the problem with this is because they think they know better. And they think they can have more, they have moral ascendancy over us people simply because they wear their own clerical robes. That is far from the truth. Because we lay people are more intelligent than they are. Yes. And we know how to discern. They don't know how to discern. We know how to discern. I know how to discern my faith. And a lot of Catholic devotees know how to discern their faith. And why is it that the CBCP is very silent about it? Because they know that the faithful are right. Yes. So, in effect, Justice, going back, you are telling us that what Father Sikia and his cohorts have done are just following, they are just doing what Cardinal Rosales was trying. Cardinal Rosales actually bared his motives during his talk last July 25, okay. 2016, before the before the Carmelite nuns in the yes, past. Yes. And he said, Lahat it's all illusion. And there is no truth to the apparition. And he said he he wanted he wanted the, the, the devotion to be banned. But he could not do anything because the 2015 decree came out. And uh, 
it is said that the decree of Arguelles' decree is actually a mistaken belief on the part on his part. Wow, for him to say that, he did. to accuse Car Ar Bishop Arguelles, he said he was mistaken. He was mistaken okay. in his decree, wherein. How can he be mistaken when Arguelles has the proofs? The commission, the commission which he, which he established has all the reports, has yeah. all the proofs. But number two, how can it be mistaken? Bishop Pedernas affidavit, which I subscribe, says that the apparition, they actually, the, the, the event in Nepal was actually supernatural because he witnessed the falling of the leaves, the, the, petals. those petals. The late Ramon, the late Archbishop uh, Gaviola, he also witnessed the dancing sun. And it, he made that strong statement even. It was, it was uh, subscribed before me. So on this great personages, and these are not, uh, are not ordinary priests, unlike Sikia and the rest. These are, both of them are Archbishops. And we have, the late Cardinal Vidal. Yes, of course. Your very close friend. Who was also Archbishop of Lipa. of Lipa. He was a believer. He was a believer. He was a believer. So how can Cardinal Rosales say that everything was just... A guni guni. Guni guni is actually an illusion, a dream. And mm -hmm. it's not even Tatang a dream. Isi. And it's a creation of the mind. Tatang isi. Imagine. Im imagination. No, imagine. But how can it be imagination? They have, we have three distinguished but this to this, uh, so Cardinal Rosales is making a very great accusation. Actually, what Cardinal Rosales is saying is being done by his by the exorcists. The exorcists. Also, they say they are the agents of. Talking. The same. They say with Cardinal Tagle. I wrote a letter to Cardinal Tagle last. Uh, complaining about Father Sikia. Yes. Mm. Mm. Last August 18, 2017, I wrote him a letter and I complained about him, about the supposedly the confidential report of Father Sibia, wherein there were so many misleading statements about the Lipa apparition, especially on the character of the sister And I asked him to investigate because it was actually creating confusion among the devotees because they were saying now that the images should be destroyed, mm -hmm. buried to the ground, mm -hmm. because it's demonically possessed, because Sister Tinsi was also demonically possessed. Ergo, whatever image that he has in mind all demonic. are all demonic. Demonic. What did he do? He was actually complacent with Father Sikia. He totally ignored my letter. He did not What do you it. think why he ignored your letter? Because he was in complicity with what Father Sikia was doing together with Cardinal Rosales. I am making this strong accusation against both of these. Uh, Who are these people, Justice? Actually, Father Sikia and the rest of the exorcists are in, very emboldened to do all the things that they have to do, the heretical things that they actually did. And the crime of falsehood. Falsehood. Mm -hmm. Because they have the backing of Cardinal Rosales, they have the backing of Cardinal Tagli, and they have the backing of Archbishop Villegas. Who was then the CBC president oh, yes. in 2015? Oh, yes. So these three ecclesiastics, do you think Father Sikia will be so emboldened to make that declaration and going around Metro Manila and saying that the statue of the Virgin Vindyatic should be destroyed or burned because it's demonically mm -hmm. infested? Mm -hmm. Where did he get his carriage? Were it not for the fact that he was being protected by Cardinal Tadi. So what is the responsibility here of Archbishop Socrates Villegas? They are all competency funds in the heresy. Wow. All of them. Wow. Your command responsibility, Father, you allow your priest under your diocese to do a heretical act, condoning what does not make you okay. an accomplice. Please repeat that. Without doing anything, you condone your priest, you become an accomplice. Accomplice. Okay. You can, you can become even a co-conspirator. Oh. 
his total his total absence of any of any action on my on, on my two letters. And then we had a meeting in 2018. He said he would look into it. He never did until he was after he was promoted to the Vatican post. He never did. He never did. This is a deliberate negligence. It's not negligence, it's malice. It's malice. Just like Magnozzi and Cardinal Santos. They wanted to put a stop to the devotion. They had to banish their salsa. They took over the investigation. Actually, it was, it, was a, it was not a real investigation because they were just commanding, the, they were just instructing yes. the, the six bishops, sign this. Yeah. That's why, if you recall, one of them said, he signed it under duress. You yeah. remember Father the late uh, Bishop Guerrero? By the way, I want to inform you something. Mm -hmm. Somebody said to me this uh, this morning. Remember the two the two Carmelites sent to investigate, Father Molan and Father Stanley, Father Shanley. Mm. Father Shanley, before he died, talked to Father English, the redemptorist, who was working with Ter Singh in uh, about the dictionary, uh -huh. okay? And it was Father English who shared to Archbishop Gabiola, there's a letter of English, uh, Shami saying that they were forced to sign the document. Yes. Actually, there was, there was, there was a breach of jurisdiction there. Exactly. Because, Very confusing. No, it was a bit of jurisdiction because remember that the Carmelite order is pontifical. Yes. It's only under the Pope. However, Bagnozzi claimed that he was doing it. He was doing under the authority of the Pope. That's why he he actually he actually forced Shanghai to do this. This is a big scandal. A big scandal in the church. Big scandal, which the present CBCP refuses to rectify. Yeah. The only way to rectify it is to have access to the Vatican the files. Mm -hmm. Now that Pope Francis has opened it, what makes them? What are they hesitant? Why are they hesitant to do? To go about it and have access and check, because in the talk of Cardinal Rosales last July 25, 2016, to the nuns in Lipa, he said that. There were several inquiries as to the Vatican files, and there was none. And according to him, oh, they, they were keeping it a secret to prevent any scandal. Okay. Well, it's more than academic. That, that reason is more than academic with the declaration of Pope Francis last March to last year. Yes. That the file should be open. Everybody, it's available. Well, we don't have any. Lay people do not have that kind of uh, access. It can only come from the bishops. And the bishops, our bishops are not doing anything. That's why I'm challenging them with my letter last January of this year. I ask them to do what they have to do. Their moral duty to do what is, what is their moral duty? To declare what is the truth on the Lipa event in 1948 because they owe it to us. If they refuse to do anything about the truth, about the promulgation of the truth, about the pronouncement of the truth, then they're guilty of what? They're guilty of misrepresentation because they are actually fomenting the falsehood that was done by Bagnocci and Cardinal Rosales. Santos. As under the Santos. Yes. And also now, down the line. Even Rosales. Down the line, Father. Yes. And what happens to their moral authority to teach the faithful to be honest and true when they themselves are not honest and true to themselves it's and to their sense. calling? It's a show. No, they have no business. They have no business. They have no business telling people, telling, do not steal, do not lie. And criticizing even the government. Criticizing the government, extrajudicial killing. What, what, did they, what, did, what, what about the injustice that they have done to us, the Jobtics devotees? Yes. Justice, this and to the Blessed Mother. Correct. That's very correct. Justice, this is very good. I mean, you really explain it very well. But I want you please to repeat so that the exorcists will know 
what are those things that they have committed? They might not be aware of the, how grave what they have committed against. Father, I charge them with notice. I charge them with knowledge. They are priests. They are not ordinary people. Then, priests then? And what then they should know our religion and Catholic. They know what, what is the meaning of heresy. We know, when you don't follow the teaching of the church, when you stick to your own belief, against the teaching of the Catholic, against the teaching of the magisterium. Isn't that heresy? They should, they should know better. They know it, Father. But they are so bored in doing that. Why? Because they are being backed up by Cardinal Tagle, Cardinal Rosales, Archbishop Garcera, Archbishop Villegas. So they think they are indestructible because these four ecclesiastics are yeah. covering for them. So invincible. At all invincible and destructible. And this is how how grave is the matter, and and that is the reason why there's terrible confusion. And thanks God, Bijatrix devotees are coming to to understand the details of what we believe in. I am grateful, Father, for the your interview. Because at least with this interview, little by little, they will know the truth of the, of yes. the events in 1948. Because they were kept in the dark. They were just told, forget about it. So it, can you tell us, what, how great is the role of Rosales, eh? Cardinal Rosales? Upon knowing it through the talk that he gave. He perpetrated the fraud that was posted on us way back in 1951. Fraud. Fraud, deception. He perpetrated the deception, the fraud of Bagnochi with the connivance of the late Cardinal Santos. And down the line until now, what is the biggest proof? That there is a 1951 Vatican decree signed by Pope How come they could not even produce it? Where is it? Are we, do you expect us to believe book, line, and singer what they say? And any pronouncement of the Catholic Church, any pronouncement, any papal decree of such significance and importance and in such a controversial topic, the decree should be published. Please tell them that. Oh, no, I'm saying that. I'm saying that. The decree should be published, should be promulgated. That is always published, any decree. That's why I say, they say, oh, the Papa, the Kabadi said, the, the Church has spoken magisteriums. I, I asked Padre Kabari, where is your proof that the church has spoken on this? Could not present the 1931 decree. Neither Sikia could present yeah. the 1931 decree. Oh, by the way, I also accused, I also accused uh, Father Kabari before the Provincial Council of the Dominican Order of deception as far as... You accused him? I, I charged... I Father Kabari is a Dominican uh, prior. Yes, on loan by to the Archdiocese. And... Uh, wait a minute. I have it here. No less than... Uh, Excuse me, Father. That's all right. Oh, here. I filed a com formal complaint against Father Cavani for spreading false and malicious lies about the Mediatrix devotion, saying that the image of Our Lady is demonically infested. I filed a formal complaint against him with the provincial order, with the provincial council of the Dominican order, the highest council here in the Philippines. Yes, yes. And, of, and on October 19, 2018, and they came down with the decision. I'd like to read. The following Prior provincial in this council circular letter on the decision of the September 15, 2018 conciliation meeting between Father Winston Cabani and former Justice Sergeant Demandrian. He made it actually, he said, conciliation, they used the word conciliation as a euphemism. Actually, it was a confrontation, Father. 
it was a confrontation between by nature it's confrontation it was a confrontation between me and father kabadi on the basis of my letter complaint and it even reached the, the master general father so it came down to the provincial council to make the necessary decision so what were the exhortations given to father kabadi here by the provincial council of the dominican order here in the philippines number one to obey the pastoral instructions, meaning the instruction of the late of, of uh, Cardinal, Quibedo. Cardinal Quibedo to continue yes. there is nothing wrong with the veneration, yes. to continue that it's not demonically infested, mm. that it is it, it is not the veneration of Our Lady Mitratic Sister mm. is not something that is idolatrous. It is that the that the supposed apparition is nothing it's not supernatural, it's not uh, preternatural because if it merely said it is not supernatural only, but it never said it's preternatural as claimed by Father Sibia and the rest of his exorcists. So he said the interpretation by uh, by Father Orlando Quibedo, chairman of the Episcopal Commission for the Doctrine of the Faith here in the Philippines which was dated July 7, 2018. Yeah, yes. And this is very important, Father. Number two, it is very important. It's actually an admonition or a warning given to Father Kabani. I quote, to refrain from offering any explanation and comment on the apparition and use of the image of Our Lady of Majestics. Wow, that's explicit. Very explicit. So if he violates this uh, admonition or exhortation or warning, then it could be there could be a, a graver punishment due him. That's why I'm closely monitoring his activities, whether he is really following this directive. Signed by Father Napoleon Sipala, prior provincial of the Dominican province of the Philippines. Well, yes, Justice. By the way, Justice, I want to thank you because you have given me the letter given to you by the Master General, Master General Bruno the, the letter in response to your letter. My written, complaint. Yeah, <laughs> on your, to your complaint. A uh, letter by Father Kabadin. No, excuse me, Father. This is the option. Of this is not. This is not. I filed a formal complaint yes. with Bruno Cadore, the yes. Master General. It was referred to the prior provincial. But, but I thank you very much because reading the letter oh, he made of a Father of, he made a lot of admissions there. I came to know about what they are doing. They buried this statue. Yes, yes. <laughs> they are accusing us of idolatry. And they are even accusing you, Teresita Castillo, the sisters. Everybody accused, not themselves. Everybody. It's actually... It's actually it was a, it's a foolish accusation, Father. Father Kabading was accusing me of and uh, are committing an idolatry and committing this mm. by venerating the Medjantics. Yeah, comics. that is why I clarified to him in my post. I said, Look, Father, <laughs> he, he, he must be ignorant of the second Ecumenical of Nicaea. I don't think, I, 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 I hope now but, he knows. Father, he teaches, he teaches or no, he teaches history. He should know. It is, he teaches patristic history. Imagine, it's patristic. It's doing He should be, you know better. Yes. The Second Council of Nicaea and the Third Council of Constantinople, both of them refer to the veneration of any image of Our Lady. You know why she should know, with Justice? Because in those councils, fathers of the church were still present. Yes. He should know that. But be, they were overwhelmed with what would be want no, to happen. Have, he should know better because he teaches patristic history in the in the central Patrology, seminary. yeah. Oh, oh boy. They studied the fathers of the church. Then he should know better about the, the ancient doctrines. Mm -hmm. So, and I thank you very much because that letter is enough for me to understand where they are coming, <laughs> the exorcists. And I'm studying them line by line because... And, the I want to tell Father Kabadi. His argument was this. Since the 1951 Vatican decree said, you can have it, Ivani. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Says that 
the apparition in supposed 1948 that is not supernatural in mm. origin, and therefore it is just a, the pediatric scene is just the image, the, the imagination of Sister Teresa. As what said by Rosales. And that it should not be venerated, mm. but it's, that is wrong because Nicaea is very explicit. Constantinople is very explicit. Yeah. Any images of Our Lady. I am a sculptor. I can do an image of Our Lady. True. I can venerate. True. For as long as it represents our Blessed mm. Mother. It resembles, and we can recognize Mary as is a representation it's an of icon. Yeah, It's an icon. An icon is to be respected. It has to be respected and venerated. Venerated. And therefore, what they have done is contradicting the teaching of Nicaea. And not only that, Council of Ephesus, yes. declaring Mary as the mother of God. Yes, yes, yes. Well, this is lamentable that all these priests who are supposed to know the doctrines are committing against the doctrine. <laughs> <laughs> well, they better be wary because I'm not done with them yet, Father. My and I on that. I'm thinking, well, I'm actually preparing a heresy complaint against them if the Vatican City. Yes, I think, I believe, Justice Harriet, that's the proper thing to be done because they have committed a heresy. I remember Cardinal Quibedo uh, responding to you. You showed it to me, saying they never committed any heresy. They have committed heresy. Oh, hmm. Quibedo was also covering for, for them. Yes. That's, can you imagine Sunday board? That's why I wrote very, yes. I wrote a very strong letter to Cardinal Quibedo. He made a very sweeping statement without even telling me what was the basis of his conclusion. Because yeah. he never even investigated. He never even investigated. That's the problem. Here. That's the problem. Uh, that's the problem. Father, um, in politics, in civil uh, authorities, you have the, they even incorporate the organization. You have the old boys network. In the church, we also have the old boys network of this abominable ecclesiastics. Now it's clear, so clear justice, that they are not just negligent, it was deliberate and they have been maliciously, they have the malicious intention to make this. I am banking on the new Archbishop of Manila, Cardinal Arbinkuna. Ah, Arbinkuna, yeah. Jose. I, I will reiterate my complaint against Father Sikia. That he should, he should start investigating that. What was left, what was ignored by Cardinal Tagle, he should not ignore it. Well, may I ask you one thing? Because Cardinal Tagle received your letter, and yet he ignored your letter. What is the accountability of Cardinal Tagle? As I said earlier, Father, he must be an accomplice to the evil deeds of Father. Please Sikia. define to us the thing. Accomplice? Well, a co-participant in the work of heresy of Father Sikia against the Mijatrix. Oh. Thank a co-participant. Malali. In legal parlance, it's co-conspirator. Co-conspirator. In legal parlance. Yes. Not in ordinary, 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 ordinary vocabulary, it's called co-participant. But that, is that also the role played by Archbishop Villegas? All of them. Archbishop Garcera? Cardinal Rosales. Cardinal Rosales. Even Cardinal Cuedo. They, they are guilty of covering up. Okay, it's covering up. Some of them. Covering up. Okay, Justice, please, because the, the Mijatrix devotees are so, are so excited to have this again, please tell them something to to sustain their enthusiasm, defend our cause, the cause of the Mijatrics. I, I address this to, I make this statement to our, my fellow Mijatrics devotees. Please do not lose heart. Continue with your fervent devotion to Our Lady Mijatrics for grace. In the end, the Blessed Mother will triumph. And she will never forsake us. And what we are fighting here is the truth the truth of her apparition and the truth that she is actually our mother and the truth that she is actually the majestic of her grace, meaning she is the majestic between man and her son, Jesus Christ. When he said all grace, it means Jesus Christ, her son. Yes, yes. It's not all graces, it's yes. all grace. 
And uh, to add, I would like to tell to Father Kapadi that we are sure with our understanding that what happened in Lipa is just a private revelation. It's not a public revelation. And we know it's not the difference. All we right. know the difference. You know, Father, I would like to make that this thing also that uh, Father Kabali said if you continue with liberation, you, could be, you commit idolatry now. The, Vat the Vatican has never said when it comes to private revelations, the Vatican yeah, make a uh, strong, uh, strong rebuke against those who do not believe. Like, for example, the Vatican has recognized the authenticity of the apparition in Fatima and in Lourdes. Yeah. But yet, Catholics who do not still refuse to believe in the authenticity no do, not, do not commit any sin. No. They don't commit idolatry, they don't commit anything. It's a private devotion. Precisely, because yes. it's not a public revelation, it's yes. a private revelation. Then, how come they are saying that we are committing idolatry? That's another heresy again, Father. We don't, we don't put the private revelation that happened at Lipa as equal with the doctrinal pronouncement, dogmatic pronouncement of the church, and even with the private revelation uh, in the church. No, they are not equal. It's a private devotion. And please, Father Kabali, we know. If you know your subject, we have to know more about it because we have to defend our love for the Blessed Mother Mary. Oh, I challenge Father Kabali and any one of them to approach the public debate. And I hope that the CBCP will do something. The problem with the CBCP is in its, uh, in its inaction. It's about time. They rectified all the errors that were done in yes. the past. For 72 years. Yes, Justice, because by delaying it... Truth has been buried. Hmm. Falsehood has become the truth. Falsehood has become the truth. And by delaying it, it's not a good sign. We will not stop. Uh, this is my promise to you, fellow Mijatrix devotees. I will never stop fighting for the Mijatrix cause until the end of my life. I made this promise to Our Lady. So I ask for your cooperation too. I ask for your prayers and ask for your support. But if there is need for us to make a petition, a public uh, uh, a group petition or common petition to CBCP to consider my letter of January 28th for them now to get to have access to the Vatican files, especially on Pompeius of Support Papa's the 12th decree of 1951. Then let's push our bishops to do their job. Yes. Thank you. That's very good. Please also talk to the sisters of Carmel. Ah. Mother Cecilia and your, your three counselors, Sister Mary Grace, Sister Mary Teresa, Sister, Sister, Fe. Sister Fe, thank you for your prayers. I know you cannot I know you cannot be very vocal about these things, but you can always but you have assured me of your constant prayers for my work and for wisdom for me to do it and the patience to to, to push through with it despite all the obstacles. Rest assured, I will not stop doing my job for Our Lady, and I will, not, I will also not stop defending the sanctity of your monastery, even against Archbishop Garcia. Thank you, Justice. Thank you very thank much. You very much. Thank you very much. And God bless you always. And thank you also very much, Father, for, this, for the, the interview.